So welcome back to the next installment of my 10.0.7 tier list. And if you guys have been following along, then you know that today is going to be our DPS one for raid. Now this will be tackling mythic raid. And the way I'm gonna do this, S tier are gonna be your great specs that are really, really valuable for you to have. A tier are really good ones that you want. B tier are situationally good. Uh, and C tier are the more niche ones. Now D is kind of unplayable. Spoiler, there's no D tier specs. Um, no specs are that bad. Uh, but keep in mind that generally, 99% of the cases, bringing your best player is better than bringing the best spec. So bring the player, not the spec. I'm a big advocate for that. These are just kind of a fun way of knowing what's powerful and what isn't. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's get into it. Uh, also, though, before we start, I guess, uh, if you enjoy the video, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you watch my stuff regularly, make sure you're subscribed. YouTube kind of just recommends it to you sometimes and you're not actually sub. So double check with that and uh, we'll move on. So. We're gonna start off the back with Affliction Warlock. So Affliction actually got some buffs in 10.0.7. And if this was two or three weeks ago, uh, before they nerfed them, uh, they would be insane. Literally just insane. But uh, they were nerfed down a bit. Uh, their single target is really, really good out of all the Warlock specs. And they also have the ability to spec into some uh, Spread Cleave or some uh, AoE Cleave with like the Seed builds and stuff like that. So they're very powerful. Uh, they're not like insanely busted, broken, carry you through a section of a fight or anything. Um, and they they have the warlock ability of just being incredibly tanky, bringing gates, health stones, and all that stuff. So they're very powerful. So I think they deserve an A tier. Next up, Arcane Mage. Now, Arcane, I'm torn between A or B. Um, in 10.0, Arcane was definitely A tier, very, very powerful. And in some fights like Raz, Arcane is really, really strong. Um, Ar Arcane really carries shields. But in other fights like Frost, I don't think it's that good. I'm going to put it in A because I do think that its burst profile is very, very valuable for a lot of the harder fights this tier. Uh, Raz comes to mind specifically. Uh, it can burst down the adds on either side can burst down your shield. So that alone is very, very useful and very, very powerful. Uh, but there are limitations to it. But I think that um, just how good it is there is very strong. Also, you have the ability to swap to Frost on fights where it's not as good, uh, which I'll touch on in the Frost section. So I think overall Arcane is going to be an A tier. I'm going to put Arms in B. Arms is really good at execute, uh, and that is, again, really important for uh, Razageth in particular. Arms can be very, very powerful there, but I don't think they do anything uh, that crazy to warrant them a little bit higher. Uh, you're going to want one warrior, and you want your warrior to be able to swap between Arms and Fury. Uh, arms is more of that um, burst AoE with its cooldowns and single target execute niche, which it's very good at, but I don't think it brings enough to warrant the A or S tier especially with how good Prot Warrior is. Prot Warrior is still one of the better tanks uh, in the entire game. Uh, so it cannibalizes its a, um, its utility a little bit, but uh, Arms Warrior is still very powerful and I do think is deserving of B tier. Uh, next up is Ass. Ass I'm torn between C and B. Um, Ass at the start of this tier was like a single target powerhouse and I think that's kind of fallen off a bit. I'm gonna put it down in C. Uh, it's close, it's between B and C. And I think you could have an argument for either one. I'm going to leave it in C tier because, you know, why not? Um, but it's very powerful at single target and single target only. Um, if you have anything outside of single target, it loses off. But even like these days, Ass isn't even the best single target spec. Uh, there are better ones for just dealing a pure boss damage. So I do think that it loses out there. It's also just a little bit worse than the other two rogue specs. They're doing C tier. However, uh, if you need that boss damage, where you're not really disrupted by being moved away because a lot of it's dot based, then Ass is still very powerful. I'm gonna put Boomy up in A. Uh, Boomy is just a really good progression and rating uh, spec. You know, uh, Starfall is really, really powerful in a lot of fights. Something like Broodkeeper, something like the ads in Razageth um, in P1.5, P2.5. All that stuff is very powerful. They bring very good single target, they bring verse, they're very tanky. Uh, so altogether, Boomy is a very powerful, well-rounded spec, which deserves an A-tier placement. BM Hunter, I'm going to put up an S-tier. BM Hunter, uh, although they got, did get nerfed a bit um, after their buffs in 10.0.7 with the kill command reduction, they still do a crazy amount of single target damage and can also do really good um, cleave with uh, Beast Cleave and all that stuff. Uh, I do think BM is one of the better range specs in the entire raid. Uh, they bring very valuable boss damage on a lot of fights where you need it. They're fully mobile, which makes them very good mechanic doers as well. Uh, stuff like eggs on Diurna and just kind of dealing with pushbacks and um, winds and stuff and getting the sparks out on Raz is very valuable and they're very, very good at that. Uh, and their boss damage is just absolutely through the roof. So I think they deserve an S tier. Uh, Demo, I'm going to throw an A. 
Demo is like the AoE counterpart to Aff, uh, where Aff is the single target and kind of spread cleave. Demo has that burst uh, cleave with dogs, with um, your demons and your armies and stuff. I do think this will change a bit coming into 10.0, sorry, 10.1, but we'll get there later. But I do think Demo is very powerful. Uh, swapping between Demo and Aff really builds a full complete uh, kind of playstyle for a Warlock. So having both available is very good. And Demo is good in those fights where you need that uh, burst cleave damage. I'm going to put Destro in B. Destro is strong still. I mean, putting it in B tier does not mean it's bad. Uh, it has a little bit worse single target than Aff does. It has a little bit worse AoE. Burst AoE than Demo does. But it has very good two target cleave. Fights like Senna, fights like Kiral gets very, very good. Those fights aren't that hard anymore, uh, so I'm kind of ranking it a little bit lower, but it is still very powerful in those fights. Uh, De Devastation, put up an A. Devastation is an A tier mainly because of the last two fights, Razageth and Brewkeeper. Uh, this is very, very good for those fights. Uh, it can really, really carry um, the adds in those fights, which is very, very good. Um, and then in Razageth, you really just need one or two evokers for Time Spiral for the wins. And the wins have been heavily nerfed, uh, so you don't absolutely need it like you did at the beginning of this tier. But it makes it much easier and makes your prog much smoother through that fight. Uh, the damage profile is good. They can bring really good single target damage, uh, as well as having really good AoE with uh, pyres and all that stuff on the adds. So I do think overall they deserve this A tier placement. Elemental Shaman, I'm going to put it in C tier. Uh, Elemental Shaman can be good. The thing is that due to its talent tree, and I think this is still the case, it's AoE or it's single target, it's kind of locked. You can't really do both at the same time. You have to kind of spec more to one or the other. But when you do spec more into one or the other, it's still not even that good compared to other classes that can just do both. So uh, I'm going to put it down in C. Now, when it's specced into either AoE or single target, it's very good at that. Uh, I, it's not like top tier or anything. It's not like the best of the best, but it's very, very good at it, but it can't be you know like solid like it can't do either one at the same time so that lack of flexibility and just that kind of lack of a of a really high peak puts it down in c in my opinion uh enhancement is a tier though enhancement has really good single target damage can have really good burst aoe uh brings really the wind fury totem which is very very po powerful i know it's a it's loss for them to do it but it's still good overall for enhancement shaman to bring that um, I do think Enhancer Shaman is very powerful, probably the better of the two Shaman specs, deserves an A tier ranking. Next is Feral, put Feral in B. Feral can have really good AoE, as we've seen in the MDI and stuff, which can be useful in certain fights. And they do bring really solid single target. Um, they're very mobile, they're very survivable, uh, and they have good uh, buffs with the verse. Um, they're not the best at anything, which does kind of throw them down in the B tier, but they're just very tanky, very versatile, which gives them a B tier uh, slot. Fire, I'm going to put in C. Fire is really good burst, and that's about it. Uh, it's just worse than the other two mage specs. Uh, it has a cheat death, which is cool, but I do think fire needs a little bit of work and a touch-up to be brought over some of the other mage specs. Speaking of other mage specs, Frost. Frost can put in A due to its cleave. On a fights where you're not arcane, you're playing Frost. Uh, Frost is really unique in that it's one of the only classes still with that sustained damage. Um, and in that sustained damage, it's very powerful. Uh, it's also really good at cleave, stuff like Senarth, stuff like Kurog, you want to be playing Frost. Again though, those fights aren't that good. But even on fights where the burst of Arcane uh, isn't as needed, or it's like more of a movement heavy fight, then Frost can be very viable there, and is a good alternative to an Arcane Mage. Frost DK I'm torn between. The Frost DK has very good boss damage and very good overall cleave damage with Breath of Sindragosa, but if something forces it out of that <clears throat> uptime, then it gets a lot worse. So, I'm torn between A or B. I do think it's the better of the two uh, DK specs right now. Um, I personally like Frost. I think it's cool, so I'll put it in A tier because why not? Uh, it's my list, right? If you don't like that, well, too bad. Make your own list. Um, but I can see an argument for it being down in B tier. I do think Frost with Breath of Sindragosa has very strong single target damage. Um, being able to ignore knockbacks is very useful, especially when proccing P1 Raz, um, and then the pushback in P2 Raz, and then the pushback in P3 Raz. So, <clears throat> in Razageth, uh, that can be very useful. But overall, um, their sustained damage is very strong, their uptime is good. The force out of that uptime, they do drop off a lot, which could be a reason to put them in B tier. But screw it, it's my list, A tier for them. So for Fury Warrior, where ARMS is kind of the uh, burst AoE cooldowns execute spec, uh, Warrior Fury is more of the sustained slash 
consistent AoE cleave whenever it needs to spec. Um, it has good single target. It has good ability every 45 seconds or so to do bursts with like Odin's Fury and stuff like that. And it has the ability to really reliably hit multiple targets with Whirlwind and then the following like uh, cleaving abilities whenever that happens. So whenever those things go on, it's very good. However, you know, again, it's just not the best overall at doing single target or doing that kind of cleave profile. So it kind of sets it down in the B tier. Um, I think if you were to take both warriors kind of together as one singular class, they'd be up in A. But individually, each warrior spec is kind of a little bit weaker. Um, they both are good in different scenarios and they're both strong specs, but I do think they do belong down in B tier. Next up, Havoc Demon Hunter. People who watch my channel know I'm a Havoc main. Havoc is very good this raid, primarily because of their ability to do insanely strong burst cleave while not sacrificing much single target damage. This is so useful on almost every single fight. Their boss damage is not the greatest, but they can do some of the best cleave in the game without sacrificing any of that boss damage. They also have really good bursts if they're able to fit both death sweeps in their essence break window. Uh, you can see uh, like on pulls, you can hit over 230,000, uh, 240,000 DPS uh, from your opening meta. Um, and that can be good on like Raj shields as well. Uh, although if you're not lusting, then it's gonna be hard to fit that in because uh, you don't really want haste. But have it overall brings a great debuff. It brings darkness, which is very useful. They're very survivable in raids and they also have really good damage profiles. So S tier it is for them. And about Marksman and B, I think Marksman is good in fights where you need that kind of burst AoE as a hunter, um, but realistically, trading BM for Marksman does lead to like a reduction in your survivability because you can't bring Fortitude to the bear. Uh, it bring, leads to a reduction in just kind of your overall single target boss damage, which is really Hunter's niche right now. So I do think that Marksmanship is good, but I think it's just kind of outclassed at the things it does by other specs. Um, and if you're bringing marksmanship, you're losing that damage that um, BM Hunter has, which can lead to kind of a reduction. It's good if you need like to kind of blow up an ad pack, like on Dathia platforms. But otherwise, I do think BM is just much more solid. I'm gonna put Outlaw in B as well. Outlaw has that cleave where it can kind of hit one target and then hit all the targets at the same time. Uh, the reason it's not in B is that I just think that uh, Subtlety is the best rogue spec right now. Uh, it brings really good boss damage, brings really good AoE damage with like freaking burst for that. Uh, Outlaw is strong. Outlaw is a good spec. It's very tanky, very survivable. All the rogues are. It has extra range, which is helpful. But on the last few fights, I do think that um, Sub is generally going to be your slightly better option uh, than Outlaw. Retribution Paladin. So this... A, shout out to that one guy who thinks I hate Rat Paladin. This is for you. I'm going to put Rat Paladin in D tier. I'm joking. Rat Paladin goes up in S tier. Um, Rat Paladin has been saved, ladies and gentlemen. Rat Paladin is by far one of the best specs in the game. They bring crazy strong single target when spec for it. They bring some of the best AoE, period, pull point blank, stop, full stop uh, in the game whenever they're talented for it. They can do a good mix of both, but they do have to sacrifice a little bit to go full one side or the other, which is fine uh, that, you know, you don't want to be able to do both. Um, but Rhett is just crazy right now. They're very survivable. They have three defensives. One of them is an immunity. They have tons of off healing, tons of healing for themselves. Really good utility with Rhett aura uh, that got changed. Uh, Retribution Paladin is crazy. It is by far one of the best specs in the game and deserves an S tier for raid. Uh, Shadow is also going to be up in S tier. Shadow brings um, some of the strongest AoE, which is very powerful in lots of fights this tier. Uh, they bring PI, which is very good. They bring uh, stamina buff, which is again, very good. And they also bring really respectable single target damage. They're a little bit uh, lost in their um, tanking, not tankiness, sorry, on their mobility. Um, if you're not like Void Elf, I guess. But overall, Shadow is very powerful and you do want to have some of these in your raid. Uh, next, we're going to bring Sub. So I'm going to put an A. Sub is probably the best rogue spec right now. It brings really good AoE, really good funnel onto bosses, which is very useful in certain scenarios. You can have a rogue funneling into uh, one of those uh, big ads on Raz, for instance. Uh, they bring really strong frequent burst, which is just generally a very valuable damage profile this tier with all like the ad waves and all the ads and stuff um, on all these cleave fights. So I do think Sub, sub is very strong. Uh, and is also, you know, just row utility. It has the poison that reduces damage. It has the, um, like, stuns and stuff that you need. It has Shadow Staff, Cloak, all that jazz. So it's very, very good and deserves an A tier. Survival, I'm going to put down in C. Survival's niche right now is really, really strong single target damage. And oh boy, is it good at that. Um, but it's worse than BM. 
uh, because it's a little bit melee. Uh, on top of that, uh, survival has kind of a negative connotation right now. Uh, I do want to put it a little bit higher potentially because of this single target, but outside of that, it doesn't really do cleave very well. Um, and a lot of it, like, it's not that much further, like not that big of a difference between BM and it. I do think BM's a little bit higher, honestly, but that could just be a bit of a uh, kind of better player play BM kind of scenario. Um, but you lose a lot of the mobility BM has to kind of just pick up a spear. And I am a big Year of the Spear fan, hashtag Year of the Spear. But I do think that Survival's single target niche just is outcompeted by a few other classes. And that's kind of all it brings. Um, you have like Hunter, just kind of a generic Hunter after that. So we'll put it down in C tier for now. But I could see this one rising. This one could be a little bit undervalued. Next Unholy. Unholy I'm going to put in B. Unholy has some of the highest single target bursts with Lust in the game. However, outside of that, they kind of just hit like a wet noodle. Um, Unholy and Frost are both, both uh, pretty good DK specs for different scenarios. If you need that 3 minute burst, Unholy is very, very strong. But if you need that consistent uptime damage, then Frost is really good. Um, because they kind of just hit like a wet noodle outside of army and all their cooldowns and stuff, I'm going to put them in B tier, but they are really good. Last, Windwalker. I'll put Windwalker up in A. Windwalker in a tier with lots of cleave, lots of AoE, is going to do very well. Uh, it'll help you a lot on Raz platforms, Dathia adds, Diurna adds, which are the three hardest uh, bosses this tier. So for that, uh, they themselves get an A tier ranking. Their single target is not great, uh, but it is much better than where it's been in the past, which is very useful. They bring three raid buffs, all of which are very strong. They bring really strong utility. They're very survivable and very tanky and very mobile. So they have a lot of tools in their uh, kit to deal with lots of things in the raid. And they also do very, very good damage um, where you need them in that AoE capacity. So overall, I do think they are an A tier. I think they're very good. And I do think they deserve this ranking I'm giving them. So that is it for my raid rankings. Now, let me know what you thought. I kind of removed them here, so kind of have to go back in the video to watch them. But let me know what you think. Drop a like, drop a comment down below if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm right. Uh, what's your favorite class uh, spec this time around? What do you think is doing really well? Personally, uh, Rhett is actually kind of really insane right now. I think Rhett is really, really good, really, really strong. And I actually hope that this carries over to 10.1, that we can see some Retribution Paladin representation in the World First Race. Um, we have not seen it. I think Rhett and Feral are the only two. No, I think it might just be Feral that's the only class that hasn't have world first kill. But um, Rhett is very strong right now, and I hope that carries forward. But all in all, the specs are pretty closely balanced. There's no D tier specs. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how things are. Uh, and again, though, let me know down below. So with that, uh, I will leave you guys with this. We'll have the Mythic Plus one out tomorrow, and then that'll be it for 10.0.7 tier lists. But again, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.